You can turn with me in your Bibles this morning. I sound like I might be echoing a little bit. I don't know if I'm a little loud, maybe. Uh, Joel, turn with me in the, to the book of Joel this morning. Chapter 1. I do want to make mention, we had it up on the screen a little bit earlier. The kids are dismissed to go to Children's Church at this time. Uh, we had it up on the board a little bit earlier. Uh, but we are going to do a baptism out at uh, Pier Lawn after church today. Um, Daryl, who was here last week, raise your hand, Daryl is back there in the back. Uh, we're going to baptize Daryl in water out there. It won't be long. We'll go out there and, and do the baptism. If you would like to come on out with us, you're more than welcome to be a part and join us in that. But we're going to baptize Daryl. Daryl's on the road a lot. Am I right, Daryl? An awful lot. Yeah, so he, he, we won't see him a whole lot, but when he's in town, he'll be here. And praise the Lord, he does a lot of long haul trucking. So we want to keep him in prayer, but we're going we're gonna to water baptize him uh, this afternoon. So if you can be a part of that, that'd be great. Praise God. Joel chapter 1, we'll begin there in a minute. Joel deals with the problems or the problem for Israel when they turned their backs on God. The title of my message this morning is to remain steadfast. We know that Israel had a problem with in and out of relationship with God, in and out of uh, fellowship with Him, and they struggled with that. And in our society today, uh, I think we're starting to see some of those things even more uh, than what we've seen them in the past. Uh, but ease and prosperity can lead people to forget God. You know, we have a lot. We've been given a lot. We've been blessed with a lot. The Lord has put into our hands as, as uh, Americans, we've been given so much. And how many of you know that anything that we have now could be taken away in an instant, quickly? But the one thing that cannot be taken away is your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to share an excerpt from this book at the close of this service today. This is called Hearts of Fire. It's a Voice of the Martyrs book. Uh, it's about eight women that... Uh, have suffered dearly to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and willingly in difficult circumstances and difficult situations. And here we are in America today and we have all the privileges of living a free, in freedom and yet so often we are afraid to share the gospel with our neighbors. We're afraid to share the gospel and, and, and express what God has laid upon our hearts and we know is the truth and yet we're, we're afraid. And sometimes I think we feel that, uh, well, everybody in America has heard. Let me tell you something. Everybody in America hasn't heard. And if they have heard, they still need to hear it again if they don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Covenant breakers. Covenant breakers. Those who turn their backs on God. Turn their backs on God. They repent. Um, if they don't repent, they're going to lose their blessing. We need, to, we need to keep in relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We can get used to the blessings of God. How many of you enjoy the blessings of God, amen? amen? But we can begin to take those things for granted at times. And so we need to be cautious that we don't take them for granted, that we're, we're thankful for what God has given us, but using those things that are in our possession to advance the kingdom's work. Joel is a warning from God. It's about a present day and, a, and, and it's about a coming day marked by an invading enemy. And how many of you know that there's an enemy out there today that's coming after your soul, that's coming after the church, that's coming after this world because he wants them in hell? That's the enemy that we're fighting against. We're fighting against Satan and his cohorts. And we need to stand strong. It's not a popular message that I'm going to share with you this morning, but I believe it's a necessary message for us today that we understand that we need to stay in close relationship with the Lord. Now, the word of the Lord, Joel in his book doesn't talk much about himself. We don't really know a whole lot about him. But at the very beginning here, it says, The word of the Lord that came to Joel, son of Phanil, hear this. But what is he saying in this first verse? He's saying that, in other words, this is a word from God. This isn't my word. This is something that the Lord has laid upon my heart. And this word is not just for that generation of Israel, but this word was also for the generations to come. That's what it means. It was for the generations to come, for those that will follow. 
And so often, how many of us, uh, amen, in serving the Lord, there have been times that maybe we've fallen away from the Lord. We became complacent. One of the stories in the book that I want to share an excerpt from today, one of the individuals had been on fire. They got saved, and, and they were on fire for the Lord, and then they just seemed to cool down and, and get away from their relationship with the Lord and just kind of settled in and began to go on cruise, and the Lord began to deal with their heart and with their life. And, and through that, when they put forth that effort again to serve the Lord with all of their heart and with all of their soul, you know, there were some things lost in their lives. But the thing that was gained was that relationship that was more powerful than they'd ever had it before because they served the Lord. They went after him with all of their heart and with all of their soul. See, we have an enemy. The enemy is coming after you and I. He's trying to bring destruction. In the day of John the Baptist, let me, let me say here, he says, O generation of vipers who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come. In John the Baptist, if John Baptist preached today, to the lukewarm church, what would, he, what would people say? Oh, you generation of vipers. And what would people say? They would say, John, you're a legalist. John, you're pushing people away from Jesus. John, you should be preaching love, love, love. John, just tell people how much God loves them. You're not very Christ-like, John. John, stop judging everyone. I've had some people say some things that don't know the Lord about some of the things that I post on my Facebook page. They think I'm judging. Boy, it's quiet in here today. (laughs) They would say to John, you just need to build a relationship with the Lord. That's all we need to do. Just build a relationship with the Lord. John, you're being a stumbling block. You see, the message of Joel is not a popular message because it's a message to Israel that had fallen away from God. It's a message to Israel, but it's also a message to you and I if we become complacent, if we become lackadaisical in the relationship that the Lord has allowed us to have through the blood of Jesus Christ this morning. So Joel, in verse 1, again, the word of the Lord that came to Joel, son of Phanel, Prophets will will call people back when they have strayed. And that's what Joel was. He was a prophet. He was a prophet from God to bring forth that word. And Joel deals with five different groups of people in this book. And these are leaders. These are trendsetters. These are elders. And I would call these elders, as we look at some of the definition, it's it's not necessarily the elders of the church as as the... um, the ones that are on the board or anything. It's those that are older in the congregation, those that have heard, those that have listened and heard. Because when the Lord said, or when he says here in verse 2, he says, hear this. What is he talking about? He's, He's saying, listen and remember. Listen and remember. How many of you can remember back and, and, and think about some of those days that the Holy Spirit moved in powerful ways? And you're not seeing that today. And you say that, and you say amen to that? That's, that's not happening as much as we, we used to see that happen. But, but the, the word of the Lord today is remember, and, and we need to remember, we need to listen, we need to listen to the word of the Lord, we need to cry out to the Lord. We need a move of the Holy Spirit today, folks. Amen. We need the power of God to be poured out again. He's also speaking to countrymen. He's tr- speaking to drunken sleepers, to farmers, and to priests in this passage of Scripture. Look with me at verse number two. Joel speaks to the elders and the countrymen here. He says, hear this, you elders, listen. All who, believe, all who live in the land, has anything like this ever happened in your days or in the days of your forefathers? Tell it to your children and let your children tell it to their children and their children to the next generation. What the locust swarm has left, the great locusts have eaten. What the great locusts have left, the young locusts have eaten. What the young locusts have left, other locusts have eaten. Have you ever seen anything like this? I'm going to ask you, have you ever seen anything like this in America today? What's taking place? Have you ever seen anything like it? Not in our day. 
Not in our day. And, and when we look back through history, I don't know that we've ever seen anything like it. Are we prepared? Everything that we have trusted and depended on is being attacked. And it's reeling. Those things that we see, and, and, and we're seeing a lot, of, a lot of different things. If you're following the news, I don't know about you, but I, I've had a hard time following a lot of the news. I'll tune in every once in a while, but I like to go to the Patriots news and look at a lot of that as opposed to some of the other news that's available out there. Because I'm, but I'm, I'm listening to others, too. I want to hear what's being said. But the things that you and I are facing today, the things that have changed, in the last couple of years already that have drastically changed even the outlook of this country. But how many of you know God's still God? He's still in control and we can trust Him. We have confidence in Him today. Everything that we have trusted and depended on is beginning to be attacked. Everything. A swarm of locusts. Look at verse 4 again. A swarm of locusts. And I'm going to read this out of the New King James Version. A swarm of locusts has destroyed everything. What the chewing locust left, the swarming locust has eaten. What the swarming locust left, the crawling locust has eaten. And what the crawling locust left, the consuming locust has eaten. You see, this is the mother of all invasions. It's the mother of all invasions. This is a time to, to react and to respond as the church of Jesus Christ today. As we stand and, and, and worship the Lord as we stand in our homes and, and in our workplaces. God is calling you and I to be a beacon, to be a light. He is calling you and I to be salt, to minister to those around us, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Have we done everything that we, have we done anything to bring this about in our nation? And I think that's a question we need to ask ourselves. Where have we stood? Individually, have we stood? For righteousness have we lived according to the Word of God have we shrank back have we compromised in some way how many of us have seen and, and, and if we if we visit or if we listen to things online at times we can see where many churches have shrank back from the truth of the gospel and are only giving a, a, a small portion and not fully giving the, the gospel that the truth of the gospel and we need, to, we need to understand that God has called us to give the full gospel. Joel addresses, addresses the sleeping drunkards here. In Joel 1, 5 through 7, it says, Wake up, you drunkards, and weep. Wail, all you drinkers of wine. Wail because of the new wine, for it has been snatched from your lips. A nation has invaded my land, powerful and without number. It has the teeth of a lion. I want you to notice that word powerful there. This, this thing this, with the locusts, uh, what's taking place, there's a power that's there. But there's a greater power that you and I serve in the power of the, the blood of Jesus Christ that we have that we can stand upon today and the promises in his word that we can stand upon. There's power, but powerful and without number. It has the teeth of a lion, the fangs of a lioness. It has laid waste my vines and ruined my fig trees. It has stripped off their back bark and thrown it away, leaving their branches white. This deep stupor is a time of distress and sorrow. You see what happens sometimes, even as you and I are Christians, sometimes we get lulled to sleep. You've heard me share the story. I've heard it for years now about the frogs in the water. You can't boil a bunch of water and throw a frog into it. What's the frog going to do? It's going to jump out. Immediately he will jump out. He will get out of that water. But if you put him into a cool pot of water and begin to heat that water, what's going to happen? Those frogs will settle in and it'll get warm. And before you know it, they're cooked. And they're done for. And that's what's happening a lot in the church today is we become lulled to sleep. We become stagnant in our relationship with the Lord. We become stagnant in our witness and our willingness to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and to send forth this message that God has given. So we must ask ourselves, am I a part of the problem? Have I been a part of the problem? And is there a way that I can turn that around by calling on my God again to call out and ask him for help and strength? You see, we're filled with spirits, but we're empty of the Spirit of God. We're empty of the Spirit of God. We, we become so self-indulgent. We, we, we become settled into the things that we have and the possessions that we have. We've become numb. 
The new wine is being snatched from our lips. The new wine, what's the new wine? That's the freshness of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit to come and to revive. And I believe that God is is wanting to, to awaken the church today to arise. Where there is no fruit, there is no future, folks. If we're not experiencing and, and, and exhibiting fruit in our lives and, 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 and touching the lives of others, then the blessing is gone. The blessing is gone. We need the fruit of the Spirit. We need that fruit that's coming forth. It's time to wake up in our day and in our age to serve the Lord. This, in verses 8 and 9, the saddest of weddings here, and this, this would grieve would grieve our hearts or should grieve our hearts more like a virgin in sackcloth grieving for the husband of her youth the saddest of weddings the groom didn't show up the groom's dead she's at the altar and he's gone he's dead grain offerings and drink offerings are cut off from the house of the lord the priests are in mourning those who minister before the lord we are to grieve we are to grieve you know, a young bride, she's dressed, she's dressed in black. Her spouse has died. Terrible thing. Terrible thing. Before the wedding ever takes place, the priests are deeply grieved. Their livelihood cut off. Everything is ruined. The fields, the grounds, the grain, the wine, the oil, everything has been ruined. And you see, we need that fruit. We need the fruit of the vine. Joel deals with the farmers in despair in verses 11 and 12. He says to wail and to weep. Despair, you farmers. Wail, you vine growers. Grieve for the wheat and the barley because the harvest of the field is destroyed. The vine is dried up and the fig tree is withered. The pomegranate, the palm, and the apple tree, all the trees of the field are dried up. Surely the joy of mankind is withered away. What is it? It's a time of shame. It's disappointment. There's despair that's taking place. Great grief. There's no harvest left. There's nothing left to pick. You know, we've had some times in, in, in Ohio uh, that the crops weren't so good, but there was always a crop. Has there ever been a year that we haven't had a crop? But this is talking about the crops. They're, they're completely dried up. There's nothing. There's a drought in the land. There's And what are we talking about? We're talking about a spiritual drought. Is there a spiritual drought in our own personal lives? Is there something that that we have neglected in our walk and in our relationship with the Lord? Have we become neglectful about the Word of God and placing it in our hearts and in our lives and, and, and our time? And when we think that, okay, I can come to church, and 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 I'm not gonna try and embarrass anybody this morning, but sometimes I see people coming in and they, they have no Bible. It grieves my heart. I think it grieves the heart of God. You say, well, I have it on my phone. That's fine. You can listen or watch it on your phone. You can look at it that way. But how many of you know we need to carry the word of God with us? Amen? Amen. Those of you that had your Bibles, I think you said amen. (laughs) I'm not trying to embarrass you. I I want us to realize that the word of God is important for us. Not just here. You say, well, I don't need it here. I I can go home and study the word. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But how many of us are? How many of us are spending time in the Word on a daily basis and and refreshing ourselves in God's Word today? We need the Word of God. We need that time in prayer on a daily basis. We need to be refreshed. Let me tell you, the world sucks everything out of us. If we're not pouring back in the Word, if we're not pouring back in time with the Lord and the presence of God in our hearts and in our lives, let me tell you, we're going to be drained as Christians. We're not going to have anything to give to anybody else. You see, I believe that we minister out of our overflow. And if I don't have any overflow, how am I going to minister? We have to have that infilling. We have to have that fullness of the Lord in our lives. There is no harvest. Your economy is being devoured. And you know what? Quickly. How many of you know quickly things could change? Quickly things could change. And the way that we see things going in our society today, it could change very rapidly very rapidly how many of us will stand and and still have the joy of the lord so often our joy comes from the things that we have and the possessions that we have but the scripture says the joy of the lord is my strength if we're counting on those things to keep us happy let me tell you something you're going to be sorely disappointed because one day those things could be taken away and they don't bring joy anyway 
It is the presence of the Lord that brings joy. A devastating attack has ruined everything. It's not your possessions, it's not your things, it's not your money in the bank that should bring you joy. It is the Lord that should bring you joy. Verses 13 and 14, Joel addresses the temple priests. He says, turn back to God. In verse 13, it says, put on sackcloth, O priests, and mourn. Wail, you who minister before the altar. Come, spend the night in sackcloth. You who minister before my God, for the grain offerings and drink offerings are withheld from the house of your God. Declare a holy fast. Call a sacred assembly. Summon the elders and all who live in the land to the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. This is a call for spiritual leaders to lead the way back to God. For us, as the people of God, to, 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 to go forth in fasting and in prayer. And I've we're going to, I'm going to call us as a church, and I'm going to give you a website uh, within this next week. I'm going to give you a website, and I want to join together with some other churches in Medina County starting on September the 12th to pray if, if each person in our congregation or a few of you, whoever will consider this, will take 10 names, 10 names of people that you're going to pray for We'll give you postcards, and, and at the end of the 10, or after the period of time that we're praying for them, you're going to mail those 10 postcards to those people. No return address. You're not going to have a name on it, but you're going to pray for those individuals, and then you're going to let them know that you've been praying for them and that you've been holding them up in prayer. How many of you know that prayer changes things? Amen? And, and if we'll do that together with other churches in Medina County, then we can touch this community and we can touch this county and God can use us to minister in this day in which he's given us. So it's a prayer. Or it's, it, we're called to prayer, to fasting, uh, to feeling remorse and penitent for our sins that we have committed in our lives. Holiness, humility. Uh, uh, we're called to repentance. You see, the religious system has crumbled. And you know, I, I know a lot of people say, well, I don't want religion, I want relationship. Well, the relationship is what we would call religion. It still is religion, but the religion has failed. But we need relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's just the title of the, of, of the, uh, of the, uh, the, the religion or the faith, the belief. We have a faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that is, so to speak, our religion. But fasting and prayer, why fasting and prayer? Because I believe it's only God that can stop this invasion. It is only Him. And it's through the prayers of His people that as we pray for, for a nation, as we pray for our, 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 our leaders within this nation, as we pray that God would minister and, and, and pull down some of the strongholds of the enemy, we can see God move again in this nation. Is it too late? I don't know, but I'm going to call on God. I want to see him turn it around. If not, then the coming of the Lord, the day of the Lord, which we hear a lot of in the book of Joel, the day of the Lord is coming. It's coming. The day of the Lord is coming. God has the only answer to the unstoppable, unstoppable locusts. How many of you have ever seen swarms of locusts? I mean, huge swarms of locusts, maybe on television, maybe on a documentary. I've seen them before. And it's amazing. It can cover the sky almost. As they, as they float in. They don't stay long, but they chew up everything in its sight. And then they move on to something else. It's destruction. It's destruction. The day of the Lord has, has become not a day of blessing, but of judgment. You see, the Lord can turn it around. And his call to Israel here for Joel, Joel was giving this call according to the word of the Lord and, and wanted them to turn back around. And the day of the Lord could either bring judgment or it can bring blessing. If we'll turn to the Lord, if we'll cry out to Him, God has the only answers for us. He's the only one that has the answers this morning. It is past time to get right with God. Repentance, repentance alone can stem God's judgment. If we will repent, God may relent. Amen? Amen. God is a God of mercy. He is a God of grace. Look at how far he's extended his mercy already for this nation and how out of whack we've become at times as a nation and some of the things that we're seeing. God will not withhold judgment for very long. 
But we must pray. We must cry out to the Lord. The enemy can be overcome. The hurts can be healed. How many of you have had hurts in your life that the Lord healed? Amen? Amen. Things that you went through, difficulties and struggles, maybe a loss of a loved one, but God healed that and he brought back peace into your heart and into your mind. See, it has to start with me. And this is a, a, an often repeated verse, but 2 Chronicles seven fourteen: if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, if we'll seek his face, if we'll cry out to him, it says that he will hear from heaven. He will, and we've got to turn from our wicked ways, and then he will forgive our sins. We need to cry out to the Lord in this day. Well, I don't have any sins. Really? Really? Are you telling me? And, you know, I, I, I could just, I, I, see, I saw all those question marks go up over your head. Like, I don't have any. Who are you talking to me? Does God want to deal with us all individually? Doesn't he want to speak to our hearts? Have we been lackadaisical when it comes to our relationship with the Lord? Have we become uh, one that, that, that would rather do other things than spend time in God's Word? Have we become so complacent that, that we don't spend time in prayer anymore? Was there ever a day that you were more on fire for the Lord than you are today? If that's the case, then that calls you a backslider. We need to get on fire for the Lord. Amen? What does backsliding mean? It means that, that we're going backwards instead of forwards in our relationship. I believe there are various stages in our walk with the Lord. I believe that we go through different things at different times. And I believe that God allows those things to come in our lives at times that, that will build us up and things that are struggles and battles for a purpose and for a reason. Joel 115, the day of the Lord is near. Alas, for that day, for the day of the Lord is near. It will come like destruction from the Almighty. A day of darkness, not of light. A day of darkness and not light. This is not the plight of a blessed people. Rather, it's a, uh, it's a people that are under judgment here. It's a people that are under judgment. Those who break covenant with God will suffer loss. We can't break covenant with the Lord. Remain steadfast. Remain steadfast in your walk, in your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. In verses 16 through 20, Joel sums it up. He talks about food, joy, and gladness are cut off. Has not the food been cut off before our very eyes? Joy and gladness from the house of our God. The seeds are shriveled beneath the clods. The storehouse the storehouses are in ruin. The granaries have been broken down, for the grain has dried up. How the cattle moan. The herds mill about because they have no pasture. Even the flocks of sheep are suffering. To you, listen to this, to you, O Lord, I call. To you, O Lord, I call. For fire has devoured the open pastures, and flames have burned up all the trees of the field. Even the wild animals pant for you. The streams of water have dried up and fire has devoured the open pastures. Everything they have counted on has broken down. Everything. To you, O Lord, I call. You see, there is a place of hope in that. To you, O Lord, I call. To you, O Lord, I call. How many of you, when you were raising your kids and, and one of them cried out to you, Help, Mom! Help, Dad! This week we had, uh, my mother-in-law was upstairs, we were downstairs, and all of a sudden she screamed. And that's why we ended up taking her to the hospital. She couldn't move. Her back was, was, she was just frozen. And she yelled, and we said, oh, we'll catch you later. Just, you know, just pray about it, we'll come see you in a little bit. No, we didn't, we both ran upstairs to see what was going on, and she couldn't move. She, she was in, 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 in severe agony and pain because of her back. Thank the Lord for doctors, but I thank the Lord for his provision and his healing power and his provision. And Mom's still in the hospital. We're waiting to see. We've had a couple of appeals to, to see if we can't get rehab for her, uh, and this is probably our last resort. If they don't, then we'll probably be bringing her home. But... 
but uh, hopefully we'll be able to get her in rehab. But our God is a healing God. But if somebody calls, and what does the Lord do? How many of you know the Lord loves you? It says if you call on him, he will answer. If you call out to him for help and for strength to deliver you, he will be there. He joys in, in touching you and ministering to you. You see, the only hope is in return. Not tomorrow, but today. Not tomorrow, but today. Today is the present day, the immediate day. Today is the day of salvation. Hebrews 3 and verse 15, as has just been said today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion. So it is that day, it's that time that we are to call out to him. Take your Bibles, turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Look at verse 11. We're going to look at several different passages here. Deuteronomy 7 and 11. We're going to stay right there in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 7 and verse 11. Therefore, take care to follow the commands, decrees, and laws I give you tomorrow. Today. 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 Today is the day of the Lord. Today is the day that we, we need to, to say, yes, today I'm going to do what it is that you desire of me, Lord. I'm going to fulfill that call that you placed upon my life. I'm going to be obedient to your call. Look at, at 11.26 of Deuteronomy. 11.26. See, I am setting before you today a blessing and a curse. Today, today, what are you going to choose? You're going to choose a blessing? You're going to choose a curse. Today, he's bringing it to you. Today, to receive it. Look at 1132. 1132. It says, be sure that you obey all the decrees and laws I am setting before you today. Be sure. Then look at chapter 30. Verses 15 through the first part of verse 16. See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commands, decrees and laws. Then you will live. Then you will live. We are to abide by his word. We are to abide by that. We cannot really do anything about anyone else, but we can do something about ourselves. It is in our hands today. We can still make an impact up to the day of the Lord. This is still today. This is still today. See, judgment's going to come one day, and it will come. The scriptures are very clear on that, but today is the day of salvation. Today is still the days of grace. And we can call on him for help. Today, God is looking for those who will stand in the gap for the land. Will we stand in the gap? Will we pray for this nation? Will we cry out to the Lord so that God will bring healing and strength and provision in our families? What about us? Will we fight or will we fail? Where will we stand in the days ahead? Will we stand in the gap or hide in the cave? What will we do with this relationship? Everything that we depend on can be taken away in a minute. In a moment, it can be gone. Only, our only hope is to turn to the Lord this morning. Today, it's time to heed the call of Joel. Today is the day of the Lord. I want to read this expert, excerpt. This girl, this young lady's name is... May is the way I'm going to pronounce it. I might be a little off on the pronunciation. But she was a young lady that lived in, in Vietnam. Her parents had great hopes for her to get to the West, to get to the United States, or to get to Australia, where they could have freedom, because they were in communist uh, Vietnam. And so they made passage for her and a brother to go to Hong Kong. They were to take a ship to go to Hong Kong. And on that ship, the ship ended up, ended up having a terrible storm. It was a very rickety ship. They were even afraid to get on it. Uh, but they, they got on this ship. They went to Hong Kong. Uh, the, the conditions were deplorable. 
where they were having to live. They were in a refugee camp, and in that camp, uh, they had to wait until they would get papers to be able to go to either Australia or to the United States of America. And while she was there, all of uh, her relatives, when she was raised, she was taught to worship the spirits that the spirits of her grandparents and her great-grandparents would watch over her, and that's who they worship. They would light candles and, and sacrifice sacrifices. And so when she got to Hong Kong, this is what she believed, but she passed by a, a place where they were having a, a church service, and she listened for a moment. She said, you know, she heard the words that God loved her and that God cared for her, and she thought, well, that's wonderful. You know, she had never really heard anything like that before. And she passed it by, and she, after a while, finally went back in. She got saved. She accepted the Lord into her heart and into her life. She put away all of her idols, all of the incense, all of the things that she was burning, and she got right with the Lord. Then she ended up meeting a man that uh, was a Christian man also. He had gotten saved also. They were, had plans to eventually marry and to spend time, of course, the rest of their lives together, she began to become complacent then with her relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. She began to draw back, and, and, and finally she realized that what she was doing, and God spoke to her heart, and, and she began to seek him again with all of her heart. And here she was, and she, she was about, she had been there almost five years now. It was about four months away from her getting her visa to either go to Australia or to the United States. And here comes this time, and the Lord speaks to her and says, May I want you to go back to Vietnam and preach the gospel. Very uneducated. Didn't know the word very well, but she accepted the call. And the next Sunday in service, or whenever they held their service, they, they got together and she announced, The Lord has called me to go to, back to Vietnam. And I'm going to go back to Vietnam and I'm going to preach the word of God. No matter what the persecution might be, I'm going to serve the Lord. And so she faced all of her family or all of her friends that were there and they were all telling her she's crazy. Surely the Lord didn't tell her to do such a thing. You're only four months away from going to the United States or to Australia. What do you think you're doing? The man that was planning on marrying her disowned her, said, I don't want to have anything more to do with you. If you're going to serve this guy, if you're going to go back to Vietnam, what's the matter with you? We have prosperity ahead. We have looking at the possibility of great things in Australia or in the United States of America. And she said, no, no, I'm going to stand with the Lord. I know what he's called me to do. Eventually, she got her, her, her passage back to Vietnam. It was a very big struggle. There were a lot of things that she had to learn. She was able to connect with some other Christians, and she began to learn the Word of God in greater ways. And she, she had a deep hunger for the things of God, and she pursued, and she, she would go. Uh, many times she was arrested, and she was put into prison, and she was interrogated over and over again. There were times that it didn't look like she was going to get out, and miraculously, all of a sudden, they would come and have her sign release papers, and she was released to go. The hand of God continued to be upon her life, and and she began to go to the remote villages carrying Bibles every time she would head to the remote villages, which were very dangerous to go to because they were, many of them were in the mountains. And, and if she were to, to make a one wrong move, she could fall off the cliff into the rivers that flowed through those mountains. But she endured all of that. She became very weak and malnutritioned at times because of the imprisonments that she had and eating a bowl of rice with others that were just one bowl of rice that they were allowed to eat out of for everybody that was in that prison cell. But she endured and she continued to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and put forth every effort. But she would carry Bibles to these uh, distant places. Eventually she was hooked up with an individual that was connected with a, a village called uh, Mung is the way I'm pronouncing it. I'm not sure if I have the right pronunciation, but this village, this group of people that were very hesitant to allow anybody in, but this man that she came in contact with had an in with them, and so he introduced her to them, and she decided that she would come and begin to minister to them and share the gospel with them. And so she did that with all of her heart and diligently. And then again, she was arrested and, and put in jail for a long period of time. 
But here we see, and this is what I want to read to you, and May shared the gospel with, with the Hmong. She saw again and again the transforming power of God's Word. Many were alcoholics, while others practiced strange witchcraft rituals that included drinking animal blood. After accepting Christ, though, they gave up the rituals and were willing to face persecution for their beliefs. They believed Christ would return soon, and they wanted to be ready. May sensed their, hun- May sensed their hunger, and she began training Hmong Christians to be leaders. Many would travel on foot for two days, two days, to get to the training site. In some villages, there were no Bibles. In others, Christians felt greatly blessed to share a Bible among 40 to 45 families. One Bible, 40 to 45 families. How many of you have five Bibles or more? (laughs) One Bible for 45 people. Christians felt blessed. Some families sold everything, listen to this, they owned to go to Hanoi in search of single, a single copy of the Bible. But even there, they couldn't find Bibles in the Hmong language. With every visit, May carried more Hmong Bibles printed by her missionary contact. She was thrilled every time she saw grateful tears of joy in eyes of the Hmong Christians as they held God's Word in their hands for the very first time. The long trips were a drain on May's strength. She still suffered from motion sickness, just as as she had on the boat to Hong Kong. She sometimes wondered, as she fought the nausea, why God would call her to a ministry of travel, but not heal her from the miserable illness. She tried to sit near the bathrooms on the trains because she knew she would be sick. She spent countless hours balancing Bibles or bags of Bibles on motorbikes while driving over the muddy roads. And she walked many miles, always carrying Bibles. She sewed the names of Christian contacts into the, into the seams of her clothing so the police would not find them if, they were, if, if she were arrested. May eventually... After so much turmoil, eventually marries. They try to have a child. She lost her first baby. The second baby, and the doctors told her, you'll never have a baby. You'll, you'll never, it'll never be possible. They tried again. And then she had this. She was getting ready to have this baby, and the doctors were recommending that she abort this child. And she said no. And the, the doctor told the husband, he said, it's either hit her or it's the baby, which do you want? Because both of them will not survive. Well, she had the baby, it was a little girl. And she, she is raising that child. She's still living today in, in Vietnam. She is raising that child. Her greatest joy is, she says, I want to raise my child to walk alongside me in ministry. Folks, if you have a Bible and you're not reading it, you need to get that thing off and you need to dust it off and you need to begin to read that Bible. People that are, are dying and giving up everything so that they can get one copy of the Bible. They're risking their lives by even taking those Bibles into those people. Every time they go in. Folks, we need to be in the Word. We need to be in, 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 in fellowship with the Lord. And this is how He speaks to us. This is how he speaks to us. I want want to open the altars this morning. I'm going to ask the worship team to come back and sing that last song that you guys sang. Folks, if if there's anything, I I don't care how small or, or, or how large it might be, that you need to repent of this morning, I want to see you at the altar. I want, to, I want to see you come. Folks, we need a closer walk with the Lord Jesus Christ today. Amen? We need a closer walk with Him. And we need to call out to God. And, and, and you may be reading your Bible. You may be praying every day. 
But there are still things in your life that you know you've got to get right with the Lord this morning. This altar is open. I want you to come. I want you to stand. I want you to worship the Lord. Those of you that might sit at your seats, if you see somebody that comes forward that could use a word of prayer, man, don't hesitate. Come. Lay a hand on their shoulder and pray for those individuals. Lift them up before the Lord. But this altar is open right now. As they begin to sing and as, they, as we begin to worship the Lord once again, I want you to come to this altar. In the presence. 